Hello everybody, it's Molly with All Years, and today I'm at the Magic Kingdom with an all new video. Now Magic Kingdom has several themed lands around the park and they are so immersive with different food, attractions, entertainment, merchandise. But have you ever thought which is the best of these lands? That's what I will be investigating today. I'm going to walk around the park, talk about everything there is to do in each of the different lands at Magic Kingdom and then we're going to figure out which is the best of the best. I literally have no idea how this is gonna shake out. I have no idea how they're gonna end up being ranked, but it's gonna be fun to figure it out along the way. We're gonna learn lots of fun things to do at Magic Kingdom, take a closer look at each individual land. I'm really excited. I hope you're excited. Let's get going. We got a lot to cover. For today's video, we're going to be looking at Magic Kingdom as it's divided into seven different lands. Come on, you know the song. Warning, I'm about to sing. A castle leads the entranceway to seven lands and more. Step inside our storybook, imagine what's in store. -lee 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 -lee. It's all just magic, wrapped up in pixie dust. Okay, I can stop now, but you get the point. Seven lands and more. That song was actually written when there was Mickey's Toontown Fair, which is no longer here, and it has been since converted into Storybook Circus, which is part of New Fantasyland, which is an extension on Fantasyland in 2012. So, all that to say, we're gonna split Fantasyland into Fantasyland OG and New Fantasyland because there is so much to do in that land, it would dwarf all of the others. Plus, it used to be seven different lands. Therefore, the seven different lands we're looking at today are Main Street USA, Adventureland, Frontierland, Liberty Square, Fantasyland, New Fantasyland, and Tomorrowland. To make things fair when we're looking at the lands, instead of just ranking them an obsolete number and me just picking my favorite one to be the winner, we're gonna rank them in different categories out of five and then total up those numbers for a grand score of 20 if they get a perfect score. So the four categories we're looking at are food and beverage, attractions, entertainment, and land environment. Now land environments can include things like shopping, land layout, details, just overall land vibe, restroom situation, that's very important to me. And of course, we're gonna start with Main Street USA. We gotta start at the very, very beginning. So when you enter the park, the first land you come to is of course Main Street USA. You are greeted by the beautiful Disney World Railroad and then you get that perfect shot of the castle as you go down Main Street. Now, some of you might think there's not really much to do on Main Street, but to them I would say you are incorrect. And we're gonna look at that right now. One of my favorite things in Walt Disney World in general is on Main Street, and that's the Walt Disney World Railroad Station and, of course, the Walt Disney World Railroad, which sadly is not operating for day guests right now because of the Tron construction in Tomorrowland. The track goes right through Tomorrowland, and unfortunately, it's closed while they work on that coaster, so it's not going to open for a while, but for right now, you can come up to the train station. They have it parked beautifully, so you can take great pictures when you're coming into the park, and you can talk to some of the conductors and the engineers about the train, and if you do love the trains or love Disney history, I highly recommend doing the Magic Behind Our Steam Trains tour, which is still running even though the train isn't. They take you back to the roundhouse on the train. They teach you all about Walt's love of trains, which some people uh, the uh, some people that knew Walt jokes that's why he built Disneyland, because he wanted a bigger train set. So this is definitely an icon of Walt Disney World of the Magic Kingdom, and it's right here on Main Street USA. I have operated this back in my day doing a special opportunity. I operated the train around the tracks, which is the coolest thing I've ever done. Also, this is the Roy O. Disney steam engine, and it's over 100 years old, which is insane. It's a real working steam engine. If you can snag it, the train station also offers one of the most amazing views of the parades. You can come right up here, get some shade, see it come down Main Street looking at the castle and then it'll dance right in front of you so if you can snag it get here early but this is an awesome spot to watch the parade
Well, I guess we can just stop the competition right here because we just watched the Dapper Dans and the citizens of Main Street sing. So, well, that was a great video, guys. Thanks for watching. Just kidding. But if there's anything that can get you in a quintessential Disney magical mood, it is the Dapper Dans. It is the citizens of Main Street. That moment is what Disney was all about. They were singing Mickey Mouse Club. All kinds of families are stopping and cheering. Grandparents sing along with their grandchildren. It's just like, that is what Disney magic is all about. My name is Victoria Trumpetto, but you all know that. Now this is our beautiful town of Main Street, USA. What, what did you? Why don't you get up and come and visit us? That's what you're saying? Why are you sitting where you are? Come to Main Street, USA. Meet me, meet the rest of the citizens, and I will teach you how to sing so you can just Sing to your sweetheart, sing to your family. Victoria Trompetto, look me up on Main Street. Now get up and get going. Welcome. Here's a little park tip for you. Always get a times guide when you come in and get a map, or even if you don't get a map, get a times guide. Because while all of this information is accessible on the My Disney Experience app, it's much easier to just look at this paper than try and pull that app up all the time. Good job, ma'am. So when you first enter Main Street USA after you cross under the train station, you are in Town Square. On the left, you've got the Chamber of Commerce, which is package pickup, and City Hall, which is guest relations. You've also got bathrooms over there. That's very important to me. And the fire station, which is where you can check in for Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. There's usually a character here in the middle of Town Square. And then over on the right-hand side is Town Square Theater which is a meet and greet area with Tinkerbell. And right now it's Mickey and Minnie, but starting uh, in October, it'll go back to just being Mickey. So this is where you can meet the big cheese, which is a very important thing when you're at Walt Disney World, of course. Tony's Town Square Restaurant. Tony, of course, is from Lady and the Tramp. So it's fitting that this restaurant is Italian. It's a sit down restaurant, so it's a table service credit, one table service credit. The food is fine. I mean, it's just generic Italian food, but it's a great view of the parade if you can time it right, or there's actually a parade dining package. A super cute detail, it's kind of blocked by this stroller, but outside Town East Town Square patio is a heart with the paw prints because Lady and the Tramp drew it. Shopping on Town Square is pretty A plus as well. You've got the Chapeau, which is a hat shop where you can get your ears embroidered. The confectionery smells amazing. Probably because of this cotton candy they're spinning right now. Delectable goodies, Rice Krispie treats, cookies, cupcakes. Look at those insane caramel apples. Here in the fire station is where you can sign up for Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, which is an interactive card game. You will be given some cards and taught how to play and then you will help save the Magic Kingdom from the Disney villains. They give you a map and cards and a screen, and every time you come in, if you come a lot, you can get new cards, you can collect them, they do special edition cards. It's completely free, and it's super fun. I would say if you've been here before or you're killing a little bit of time, if you wanted to, you could probably spend all day playing this game. Also on Main Street is the Barber Shop, which is actually a working barber shop where you can get your kid's first haircut here. They're really great with the kids. They save it for you. There's a commemorative picture. They give them little Mickey ears. It's super cute. It's actually a real working hair salon where you can get a haircut or a beard trim or a bang trim, adults and kids. And if you do, they'll put glitter in your hair when you're done, which is pretty awesome and kind of a fun, unique experience. Everyone in there is a licensed cosmetologist. That would be a really fun kind of like random thing to do that you maybe have not done before. And of course, everyone knows the Emporium, which is the big merchandise shop along the left side of Main Street as you're looking towards the castle. It's the biggest merchandise shop in Walt Disney World in a park. The biggest one in Walt Disney World in general is World of Disney at Disney Springs, but this is the biggest one in a park. Also on the confectionery side of the street is Main Street Cinema, which is Magic Kingdom's Art of Disney style shop where you can get some pricier items like artwork, collectibles, that sort of thing. Main Street Cinema is connected to Uptown Jewelers, which is where you can grab all of your Disney Dooney and Burks. 
purses and such. Pandora jewelry, dress shop, dresses. The designer ears are usually here. So like there's the current set, the lounge fly. So if you're in the market for something a little fancier, this is where you wanna come. This is Center Street. It's a little street off the side of Main Street USA. There's nothing really down here except for some Sources of the Magic Kingdom screens are down here. But it's a really quiet spot that you can come get your coffee from the bakery and then come sit here and not a lot of people know about it. The Crystal Art Shop, which is the Swarovski Crystal Shop here and they also have blown glass and they actually have someone come blow glass several times a week. One of my favorite things here at the Arivas Brothers glass shops are the personalizable items, which would make a really special keepsake for like a wedding gift or an anniversary or a big birthday. But you can do personalized champagne flutes like these right here. Oh my God, they say Walt and Lillian with their wedding date. I'm literally gonna cry. Probably my favorite spot on Main Street is of course the bakery because that's the Starbucks where I go get my iced coffees. But you can also get Starbucks brand snacks, sandwiches. They have some desserts in there. They've got that giant donut. So it's a good little spot, especially for breakfast to grab a nosh. Right next door to the bakery is the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor, which is uh, fabulous. And I wish you could smell it through the screen. But that's where you get the hand scooped, delicious Edie's ice creams, crazy banana splits and sundaes. Really, really awesome dessert spot right next door. And at the end of the left side of the street, across from the ice cream parlor, is Casey's Corner, the quick service spot. And they have hot dogs, foot long, crazy hot dogs of the month. And most importantly, corn dog nuggets. The downfall to Casey's is the seating is mostly outside. Next to the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor is the Plaza Restaurant, which is a full service restaurant and it's a little easier to get into than some of the other locations here. There's no characters or crazy theming or anything, but the food is high quality every time I go. It's comfort favorites. They've got some pot roast, they've got fried chicken, they've got all kinds of good stuff, but the real good stuff is the dessert because it shares a kitchen with the ice cream parlor, so you know it's good. The last spot to eat on Main Street is called Crystal Palace, and it sits right on the corner as you head to Adventureland. And it's a character dining buffet, breakfast, lunch, and dinner with Winnie the Pooh and his friends. So it's usually Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, and Piglet. Another fabulous entertainment offering on Main Street USA takes place on the castle stage at Cinderella Castle, and it's called Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair. It's a show that happens several times a day. It's about 20 minutes long, and it's got Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, and Goofy, and they're joined by friends from Princess and the Frog, Frozen, and Tangled. Super cute, lots of characters. If you've got someone in your family that loves especially one of those characters or movies in particular, you're definitely gonna wanna check this out because it's very adorable. I totally cried watching it because Minnie says, I think today was the best day ever. And then Mickey's like, every day with you is the best day ever, Minnie. And I'm like. <laughs> and of course, in the center of Cinderella Castle Hub is the very iconic partner statue of Walt and Mickey holding hands and looking down Main Street. Special nod to the sharing the magic statue of Roy and Minnie, which is them on a bench and it's down in uh, Town Square. Usually I lined up with the Walt and Mickey one, but right now it's off to the side. But uh, shout out to that statue as well. Obviously Cinderella Castle is also on Main Street. So there she is in all her glory. Ugh, I love her so much. Magic Kingdom is also home to the fabulous Festival of Fantasy Parade, which starts in Frontierland, works its way through Liberty Square, and then ends going down Main Street. So I'm not really sure who to give ownership of this parade to, because technically you can see it anywhere. My heart wants to give it to Main Street because that's the quintessential thing is watching the parade dance down Main Street. If you do want to watch Festival of Fantasy on Main Street, you need to make sure to get here early because that's most primo spot. And even though it starts at two right now, or sometimes it starts at three, you should expect it not to show up for about 20 to 30 minutes after it steps off because it has to work its way all the way from Frontierland through Liberty Square before it eventually gets in front of the castle and down Main Street. Happily Ever After is one of my number one must-dos when you come to the Magic Kingdom. It's absolutely beautiful. The soundtrack is amazing. The projections are incredible and the fireworks are dazzling. I absolutely adore the show. I cry every single time. So 
that is absolutely a must do. And if you can stick around for Once Upon a Time, it's a projection show on the castle. Mrs. Potts and Chip, she's reading him a bedtime story and it's got Peter Pan and Beauty and the Beast and Cinderella and it's really a treat as well. So both of those things should be on your must do list, but especially Happily Ever After. So how does Main Street USA shake out score-wise? Entertainment easily, hands down, strong five. You've got the fireworks, you've got the castle show, you've got the move it, shake it street party, you've got the classic entertainment like the Dapper Dance and the Trolley Show and the Mickey's Philharmonic. You can meet Mickey Mouse here. So entertainment, no brainer, that's an easy five. I'm also giving food and beverage a five because Casey's Corner is iconic. Got to get those corn dog nuggets and that cheese. Obviously I'm obsessed with coffee and Starbucks is here. I also think Character dining is usually a fun idea, so you've got the Crystal Palace. And the Plaza, another full service restaurant, kind of a sleeper hit, plus Plaza ice cream parlor, delicious, smells oh so good. So five for food, oh, Tony's too, wow, there's a lot of places to eat here on Main Street USA. Tony's would probably be my last choice of the three restaurants though, but still, three sit down restaurants, quick service, coffee, ice cream, what more could you want? Atmosphere, land, environment, also a strong five. I mean, the castle's here. Do I even have to keep going? I will, because the shopping's incredible as well. You've got the Emporium, but you've also got those specialty shops like the Crystal Arts and the Uptown Jewelers and the Barbershop. What a cute little thing. Where Main Street falls short, unfortunately, is attractions. With the train closed for quite some time, there's not really any attractions on Main Street. There's the Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom card game. If you get here early enough, you can sometimes take an omnibus up and down the street, but attractions wise that's kind of it unfortunately for Main Street USA so I am forced to give attractions a one but I want to give it a two though I'm giving it a two and this is why you can still go see the train and the train station and get really cool pictures in there talk to an engineer about the trains and Source of the Magic Kingdom is a good option if it's really busy and you're looking for something to do or you are uh have been here a bunch and you want to mix it up so i'm gonna give attractions now it's got a one i'm giving it a one but that's a five in every other category so it's a 16 for main street usa all right main street starting us off strong the 16 on to the next land which is adventureland I am here in Adventureland and I actually just checked in to eat at the Skipper Canteen. It's a restaurant themed after Jungle Cruise, which I've actually never eaten here before and I felt like I couldn't give Adventureland a fair food review if I'd never eaten at one of the restaurants. So we're going to go on this adventure together and from what I understand, it'll be a literal adventure. So the menu is kind of a mix of Asian, African, South American flavors, just like the Jungle Cruise, but I love the little drawings on here there's the elephant the hippo if you actually lift up this part of the menu you see the rhino scene if you lift up this part you see trader sam so if you're a jungle cruise fan this is super cool first up i got the seasonal soup which right now is a coconut curry and it looks and smells delish gonna try my soup but I want to point out they call it the lost and found soup because it's a seasonal selection which I just think is funny because it's Jungle Cruise but anyway again it's coconut curry oh. that is good it's not an overpowering curry flavor but you can definitely taste it that coconut's refreshing that little zing of hot sauce on there. I just talked to my skipper and she said it's actually a coconut curry base and then a butternut squash soup, chili oil, and scallions. And it's really, really good. And something complex I would not expect to pick up in a theme park. But you know what? The Jungle Cruise always surprises me. Look at that. For my main dish, I got the Dr. Falls signature steak, which Jungle Cruise fans will get the Dr. Falls reference. But it's a strip steak with a caramelized onion topping a chorizo and veggie farofa which looks like it's like a stuffing deal we'll find out and a red wine reduction so this looks really good trying my steak mm. Mm. it's a pretty good cut of steak i'm trying it now with the reduction so on the menu, the steak says it's adobo season, 
And you can definitely taste that it's seasoned differently than if you were to get a steak at like Le Cellier or Yachtsman. It's definitely got a little bit of different flavor. Mmm. That was the sausage. That was delicious. This is a really good meal. And it's huge. I'm very obsessed with these leopard chairs and would like them in my home. I just had my lunch at the Skipper Canteen and it was really fun. It's a super cool themed restaurant. If you like the Jungle Cruise, you'll definitely get a kick out of it. There are different things on the wall that are Jungle Cruise related. There was a barrel called the Backside of Water. There was a shelf that said Lost and Unfound that really made me giggle. I got to eat in the Sea Room, S-E-A, which if you were a fan of the Adventurers Club at Pleasure Island, you will get that joke. My food was very good. It was definitely not something you'd expect to get in a theme park. That soup I had was fabulous and I would absolutely recommend getting that again. Um, so overall, definitely a unique experience. If you want to sit down, you're probably more likely to get a reservation here than many other sit down places in the Magic Kingdom. It's a little more adventurous than some other places. So if you've got super picky eaters, this maybe isn't a great spot. They also told me that to go get a Dole Whip for dessert. There were a few things that looked intriguing, but honestly, we're in Adventureland. If I'm eating dessert, it's gonna be a Dole Whip. But that said, if you want somewhere to sit down, and especially if you're a Jungle Cruise fan, highly recommend going in there and having a lunch. And I think you'll enjoy yourself. The first thing you come to when you're coming into Adventureland from Main Street is Sunshine Tree Terrace. The spot where you can get the iconic citrus swirl, which is the orange Dole Whip mixed with vanilla ice cream. They also right now have a float called the Red's Revenge, which is themed after Pirates of the Caribbean. It's got a little chocolate pirate hat on it. It's very cute. As we keep jazzing through Adventureland, you come to the Swiss Family Treehouse, which is a walkthrough exhibit through the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, opening day attraction at Magic Kingdom. Not at all a must do, but it's fun. You do have to walk up the stairs so keep that in mind you're going pretty high up but it's a cool view if you've got some time to kill why not the first set of restrooms in adventureland they're usually pretty crowded because they share an entryway with frontierland they're decent it's connected to a sunglass hut so if you need some new sunglasses you could get these adorbs mickey wayfarers y'all may know that i have a problem when it comes to sunglasses i have a slight addiction so I don't generally allow myself to go into Island Supply or I will buy sunglasses. <laughs> right in the center here of Adventureland is the Magic Carpets of Aladdin. It's essentially Dumbo with carpets. So I wouldn't tell you to wait a super long time unless you've got a kid who's like obsessed with Aladdin or maybe if Dumbo's line is really long. But honestly, the line here is usually longer than Dumbo because there's two Dumbo nows. Two Dumbos now. There's a cute little shop in Adventureland. It sells random things like Lion King stuff. I guess Lion King's an adventure. I guess Adventureland's kind of Africa-esque. Well, the Jungle Cruise is. So there's a, a decent amount of Lion King merch in here, which I, I actually really appreciate because it's one of my favorite Disney movies. There's also a cute line of Jungle Cruise, Tiki Room, specific Orange Birds so Adventureland fans can get their favorite characters on different things. I really like this Tiki Bird hat. So all your adventure forward movies, you're gonna find something here. Moana, Aladdin, Lion King. Okay, let's talk Adventureland characters. There are two. The first, you can meet Aladdin over by Magic Carpets of Aladdin. Sometimes Jasmine is with him, so that's a fun bonus. And then the other is everybody's favorite pirate, Captain Jack Sparrow, meets over across from Pirates of the Caribbean. And he is a hoot and one of my favorite characters to meet. The rest of the attractions in Adventureland are some of the best because they are some of the most iconic classic attractions in Walt Disney World. You've got the Enchanted Tiki Room, Jungle Cruise, and Pirates of the Caribbean. Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, the British Panther Fleet. You've heard the power sing. Jungle Cruise is yet another iconic 
attraction here in Adventureland. It features the skippers taking you on a cruise around four rivers of the world and telling cheesy jokes, which is the best part of the whole thing. You got to ride the Jungle Cruise when you're at Magic Kingdom. Now, little kids may not get the jokes, but they'll get that something's funny and they'll laugh long and they'll like looking at the animals. It's, it's a delight. It's all dependent on your skipper, but recently I've only had amazing skippers, so you just got to do it. Very important thing to highlight here in Adventureland is this cart that has these amazing spring rolls. They're flavored like different things, like there's a buffalo chicken one. <laughs> there is a cheeseburger and pizza. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> The most important thing in Adventureland is right here. Home of the Dole Whip. I used mobile order. This is an excellent spot to use mobile order. Well, really, you should always use it, but if you're going to use it one time, use it here. Because as you know, Aloha Isle is very popular because people love their Dole Whip, and the line's usually really long basically all day. So if you can get on there, use your mobile order, get it ready on your phone, and then you can just bop, skip the line, pick it up, and you will have a delicious, frosty, fruity treat. So obviously Adventureland food gets big points for this beauty right here. This is actually the pineapple vanilla swirl because I like to mix the ice cream in, but the OG is just to get the pineapple. And like I said, this is the maybe the most popular food item in Disney World, and so it gives Adventureland big time props. The last attraction in Adventureland is also my favorite, Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean is a Disney classic, but it's actually not an opening day attraction here at Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom opened in 1971 and the Imagineers thought no one in Florida would care about Pirates of the Caribbean because it's too close to the actual Caribbean and because there's lots of pirate style attractions around here. But people had seen Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland, they had seen it on Wonderful World of Disney and they're like, where's Pirates of the Caribbean? So in 1973, two short years later, they added it into the Magic Kingdom and it's remained an all-time favorite ever since. It's truly one of my personal favorite attractions here at the Magic Kingdom and a top five must do when you're here. The quick service location in Adventureland is called Tortuga Tavern. It was previously called El Pirata y El Perodico, which I cannot pronounce, but it means the pirate and the parrot in Spanish because it's directly across from Pirates of the Caribbean. Used to be only open seasonal, and I believe sometimes they'll still close it if it's not busy. But it's open right now. We're gonna take a little quick glance at the menu. The menu's kind of random. There's a brisk, uh, jerk smoked brisket sandwich. There's tur If you want a turkey leg in Magic Kingdom, this is where you go. Also, all the seating here is outside, which it's shaded and there's fans, but we're still in Florida and it's still hot. Oh, I lied. There's some indoor seating. I lied to you guys. I'm so sorry. To be honest, Tortuga Taverns probably would be my last choice for quick service here in Magic Kingdom. So, Just not a real great menu, and unless you want a turkey leg, there's better options nearby, like the egg rolls or the next land. The shop at the exit of Pirates of the Caribbean is one of my favorites. It's so much pirate merchandise. So if Pirates of the Caribbean is one of your favorites, come in here. You can get cute things like um, Mickey dressed up like Captain Jack and Minnie dressed up like a pirate. I believe she's the redhead. There's some Pirates of the Caribbean film memorabilia. And another great thing about Adventureland, as you keep exploring, there's actually another set of restrooms in Adventureland. These ones are a little bit better hidden but they're a good spot. They're at near the Pirates of the Caribbean gift shop. Another good thing about the land, two bathrooms. Another unique thing you can do in Adventureland is called the Pirates Adventures, and it's similar to Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom because it's an interactive event, but it's all in Adventureland. And they give you a pirate map, and they send you on a quest, and you do different things. And when you do certain things, other things happen, which I know is so descriptive, but basically, you'll see cannons go off or something will appear out of the bushes and send you on a mission for gold. So that's fun. The Pirates Adventure, I think is cooler than Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. But again, not something I would waste a lot of time doing, but if you're in between fast passes or you've got little ones that love being a pirate, spend an hour or so doing it. And uh, especially if you've been here a bunch of times before, it's maybe something you've never tried. How does Adventureland shake out on the scales? 
attractions, five out of five. You've got three of the most iconic Disney attractions here, Tiki Room, Jungle Cruise, and Pirates of the Caribbean. So that's an easy choice, five out of five there. Land overall environment, five out of five. It's a fun land. It's one of the first ones you come into, depending how you walk the park. There's two bathrooms, which again, very important. And the environment, it really does feel like you are in another place, in a, in a jungle, on an adventure somewhere. Food, I'm gonna give it a four because whilst I do love an iconic Dole Whip or citrus swirl and I'm really into those egg rolls, the full service is good and fun. Not the best one here. And this is also maybe the worst quick service in the park or one of the worst. So I cannot, you know, it's, it's you, no, you know. And entertainment, I'm gonna give it a two because again, there's only those two characters, sometimes three if Jasmine shows up with Aladdin that you can meet. And while those are really fun characters, you can't really compare it to like Main Street that has fireworks and shows and you get it. So adding all those things up together, five, five, four, and two. Carry the one, 16. So they're in a tie. Next up, Frontierland. Golden Oak Outpost. They do sell chicken nuggets and some fun snacks, but it's a limited menu because it's a kiosk. Does anyone remember when this used to have McDonald's french fries? Those were the days. Frontierland is home to not one, but two of Magic Kingdom's mountains, Splash Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. These are two of my favorite attractions. I probably give the nod to Big Thunder, but both are amazing, and they are two of the most popular Disney attractions in any park, as they should be. Splash Mountain is a log flume ride down to the Briar Patch with the Brer Rabbit, Brer Fox, and Brer Bear. And Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is a runaway railroad roller coaster, which I highly recommend you sit in the back. Frontierland also has a railroad station for when it's operational, you can get off here, which is not usable right now, but cool in the future. Restrooms in the back of Frontierland at Splash Mountain, mostly for when you get soaked on the ride. If you get soaked, you can kind of freshen up right here. If Splash Mountain's your favorite attraction, you definitely gotta check out this gift shop at the exit of it. There's tons of cute Splash Mountain exclusive merchandise. Like, I'm really into this Rare Fox plush. There's also a cute mug here. It says, today's forecast, high chance of showers. Adorable. There's a triple set of Pop Funkos of all three main characters. And, in case you get soaked, a cute Splash Mountain towel. Going to Tom Sawyer's Island. You actually have to board a raft, like this one over here, and then you head over to Tom Sawyer's Island where you can frolic and play and explore and discover. There is a seasonal quick service location over there. Tom Sawyer Island does close earlier than other things in the park because of the rafts that you need to get over there and because of safety, but it is a cool thing to do. Not a must do, but if you've been here before or you've got some time to kill, it's definitely something fun to check out. Behind me is Frontierland's quick service location, Pecos Bill, Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. And this is actually one of my favorite quick services in the Magic Kingdom. I love the variety of menu and I love the fixins bar. There is a little bit of a Tex-Mex vibe going on. So you can get fajitas, you can get rice bowls, you can get tacos, but you can also get a burger. And it's a really good one for people who want something a little bit different, but are still on the less adventurous side. And those picky eaters are gonna find something as well. Another great thing about Pecos is there's outdoor and indoor seating. Lots of indoor seating. There's Western Ho Refreshments, which has iced coffee and corn dogs, a couple things. There's also, of course, like anywhere, carts with churros, pretzels, popcorn, and mercy me, it seems like a hoedown is a happening. standing outside of Country Bear Jamboree right now, which is an opening day attraction at Walt Disney World. It's a show with audio animatronic bears. It's down home Frontierland fun. A lot of people love it. 
I don't think it's a must do, but if you've got some time, older people in the family will appreciate it more than kiddos, but it is a cute show if you've got some time. We also are in the middle of a hoedown, which is an entertainment thing that happens here in Frontierland, sometimes in the afternoon. Cast members that are in regular costumes like custodial and food and beverage come out and then all of a sudden they start a dancing and Br'er Fox or Br'er Rabbit or Clarabelle Cow or some appropriately uh, themed Frontierland characters come out and then do a dance party and you're welcome to join them do the hokey pokey. So it's pretty cute, pretty fun. Don't schedule your day around it, but if you're here at the right time, it's a good time. This is Frontierland Mercantile, which is the largest shop in Frontierland. They've got some different items, phone cases. They've actually got one of the DTEC personalizable phone case stations here. If you want to get a personalized phone case or magic band, you can do that here. They also have a ton of pins. This is a great spot if you are a pin trader. This is the biggest collection of pins in the park. The last attraction in Frontierland is the Frontierland Shootin' Arcade, which it does cost an additional fee, but it's like 25 shots for a dollar. You shoot a fake gun, obviously, at a Frontierland scene at Targets and try to score points. I did it in the Doing Every Opening Day Attraction video we made, which we will link for you, and it was really fun. I'd never done it before. Once again, like Tom Sawyer Island, is it a must-do? No. If you've been here a million times and have ever done it, why not try it sometime? The last thing to talk about in Frontierland is the Diamond Horseshoe. This is a full service restaurant. For a while, it was a dancing, like live entertainment at dinner type restaurant. And then it was a quick service and then it was only open seasonally, but now it's open all the time for lunch and dinner. It's a full service restaurant. At dinner, it's an all you care to enjoy feast, similar to the Liberty Tree Tavern. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same as the Liberty Tree Tavern, but lunch is a la carte sandwiches and different things like that. It's fine. It's pretty, I would say, not a great use of a table service credit if you go at lunch because it's different sandwiches and stuff, but if you go at dinner, I would definitely say it's better use because it's a $50 meal per person. Also, I'm very aware that the Diamond Horseshoe is technically in Liberty Square, but Disney World's website says it's part of Frontierland, so I'm going with their official ruling on its location. How does Frontierland shake out? Well, attractions wise, five out of five, no questions asked. Even without some of the attractions like Frontierland Shooting Arcade, Tom Sawyer Island, and Country Bear Jamboree, it'd be a five because two of the Magic Kingdom mountains are here, Splash Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. No brainer, five out of five for attractions. Moving on to entertainment, that's where Frontierland struggles. There's no characters to be met here on a regular basis unless the Country Bears are out wandering. And the hoedown is fun, speaking of the Country Bears, but not anything worth sticking around for if you're not already here. And I have to give it an extra point because the parade Festival Fantasy does step off here, so technically the parade is part of Frontierland. So again, that's a two in entertainment. Food though, I'm giving it a three. That's because while I love Pecos and it's one of my favorite places to eat in Magic Kingdom, that's pretty much it. Now that the turkey legs in Adventureland, there's no iconic snack here in Frontierland. The quick, sir, I'm sorry, the full service options, pretty forgettable. And there's just nothing that memorable about the food other than Pecos, but land environment, gotta give it a five out of five. Feels like you're in the wild, wild west. I love just strolling through this land and listening to the music. I like watching people go on Splash Mountain. I like that there is that fun pin trading shop if you're into that. And I love that Splash Mountain shop. So, and pretty decent restrooms, not the best, but not the worst restroom situation. So adding all that up, that is a 15 for Frontierland. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of Welcome to Liberty Square. That is the next land on our adventure around Magic Kingdom. First thing you come to when you get to Liberty Square from Frontierland is the Liberty Tree Tavern. This is a full service restaurant and it has a la carte options as well as an all you can eat feast. And it's actually quite delicious. Think Thanksgiving style all you can eat feast, but I've also had some of the a la carte options, salad sandwiches, comfort type foods and it's really good and this is actually an easier one to get a uh, dining reservation than some of the other locations here in Magic Kingdom so I definitely think this is not the best full service restaurant here but definitely a good option. Liberty Square is home to one of my favorite shoppies the ye old Christmas shoppie and it is the place to go for all things Christmas stockings and ornaments and decor 
and apparently Halloween stuff. We get a personalized ornament every single year and this is a great place to do it in Magic Kingdom. I just love the store and it smells like Christmas in here y'all. is one of my favorite spots for treats in the Magic Kingdom. They have churro ice cream sandwiches. They've got Belgian waffles stuffed with Nutella and fresh fruit. They've got funnel cake. If you want a snack, this is a good spot. The first attraction in Liberty Square is the Hall of Presidents. It's a 30 minute show with animatronics of every single US president. It's very breathtaking and I don't know if I'd call it a must do for most people because I don't think many kids are going to sit through a 30 minute show, but it is in the air conditioning. There's usually not a line. There is a an exhibit of presidential artifacts in the lobby and folks of a certain age will absolutely enjoy this. The Liberty Square Market is a little spot where you can get fruit, chips, drinks, some snacky stuff. The Liberty Bell River Boat, which is about a 20 minute boat ride on a steam boat around the rivers of America. I wouldn't call the Liberty Bell River Boat a must do. In fact, when I did the Every Ride in Magic Kingdom challenge, which we'll link for you, it had the lowest score. It's nice, it's leisurely, it's enjoyable. Your kids can run around on the pool deck. Again, folks of a certain age demographic may enjoy it more than others, but it's 20 minutes and it's just not a must do. But what is a must do in Liberty Square is the Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion is probably the most popular it's definitely got the biggest cult following of any Disney attraction worldwide. It's an opening day attraction, an absolute must do. It's not scary. Well, the first part has a little spookiness to it, but the second half is fun. Anyone in your family can ride it. It's a very popular attraction. I absolutely recommend doing it. And I do recommend grabbing a fast pass. And then if the line's not too long when you get here, changing it for something else. But you gotta ride the Haunted Mansion when you come to the Magic Kingdom. And if you love the Haunted Mansion, which so many of you do, there's so much lore and backstory and fun things to look for. We did a whole video of fun facts at the Haunted Mansion that we'll link for you. But Haunted Mansion is the superstar of Liberty Square. Memento Mori is a shop right next to the Haunted Mansion. And as you could probably guess, it's all Haunted Mansion stuff. So if you're a Haunted Mansion person, this is where you gotta go. The runner up superstar is the Columbia Harbor House, which is Liberty Square's quick service restaurant. It's got fish and chips, a lobster roll, chicken nuggets, but it's really good. It's one of my favorite quick services. It's all inside. You can do mobile order, but there's lots of seating because there's upstairs seating too. So there's, this is a great spot for lunch. That wraps up Liberty Square USA. That's not what it's called. How does Liberty Square fare? Well, for attractions, I'm gonna give it a three. I love the Haunted Mansion. It's definitely an icon, but besides that, the other two attractions aren't must-dos, obviously. I like Hall of Presidents more than the boat, but still neither one is really a must do for most people. So attractions gets a three. However, food and beverage gets a five. Columbia Harbor House is delicious and Sleepy Hollow is one of the best, most unique treat options in the Magic Kingdom. But entertainment only gets a one. That's because now that the Muppets are gone, there's really not that much to do. You can often meet Mary Poppins in that gazebo and technically the Parade does come through Liberty Square, but that's pretty much it. However, land environment gets a strong five, even though there's no bathrooms in this land. And I will tell you why in our historical detailed tour of Liberty Square, which we'll link for you. 
but the detail in this land is amazing. It completely immerses you there so much that you don't even notice in Liberty Square. So also environment, I adore that Christmas shop. So you gotta give it two thumbs up for Christmas. So adding all of those things together, we got five, five, three, one, 14. On to the next land, which is we interrupt this video. Because Molly actually went back for a second Dole Whip, we are now out of time. Please stay tuned for part two of Molly ranking the Magic Kingdom lands to see which land conquers all. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, so for now, this is Molly, and it's been magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.